Hello, everyone. I'm Sabrina Kramova from Financial IT. I'm Managing Editor. And today we are having a conversation about ESG investments. And we have our special guest, Gordon from Gaia Lens. You are the co-founder, is that right? Yes, I am. So for a start, can you please briefly tell us more about yourself and your company? Sure. Uh, so yeah, my name is Gordon. I'm one of the co-founders of Guy Lens. Um, uh, founded with uh, the other co-founder, Seb, uh, and we've been working on it for uh, nearly two years now. We officially launched last year. Um, and really, we saw uh, an opportunity to uh, create uh, a much uh, more helpful ESG product for investors than, than was already on the market. Um, so what Guy Lens is, uh, uh, is that we have built a real-time ESG analytics platform for investors. So we help them across the whole investment life cycle uh, of, of ESG investing. Um, that includes deep dive research into a company's ESG profile. Um, it includes portfolio reporting, um, benchmarking in terms of the ESG performance against a particular index or benchmark that they use. Um, also helping them with portfolio construction if they want to construct a particular um, portfolio with respect to some regulations or a particular theme that they that they care about, um, we can help them do that as well. And it's so great to see how investors are paying more attention on non-financial factors, right? And can you name some of the latest trends happening in this sphere in ESG investments landscape? And what is ESG exactly in simple words? And how did it become so popular? Sure. So maybe I'll start with the definition of ESG. So ESG stands for environmental, social and governance. Um, and in essence, it's about, <clears throat> as you mentioned, uh, taking into consideration non-financial factors in, in investment decisions um, and combining that with, with traditional uh, investment criteria. Um, the big trends at the moment, uh, I mean, it's, it's a really fascinating space because it's moving and changing so quickly all the time. Um, but big things that investors care about are just keeping up to date with regulation and, and impending regulation. And that depends often where they are in the world. So if you're a European investor, you're going to care about a lot of the regulation coming out of the EU, like the SFTR, which is coming out next year, um, EU taxonomy. Um, you'll be looking at um, the, the second America has, has, uh, has stated its intentions to bring out more climate uh, disclosure rules as well. So you'd be following that very closely if you are based in the US. Um, you know, more if you're a more sort of impact investor, often you'd be looking at the UN SDGs, which are a bit more idealistic um, and uh, and a bit more broad in, in their scope, um, but they're very popular as well. So I think that's one big thing uh, for investors to focus on to figure out what 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 regulation they want to keep track of and, and what affects them. Um, Greenwashing is is always a big a big trend in in ESG and is one of the big criticisms of of ESG, um, and that's really been highlighted by the recent uh, events uh, of of DWS, that big asset manager in Germany, being raided last week and being accused of greenwashing. So that's always a, a theme which uh, I guess scares both corporations who are accused of greenwashing and also investors that are in, uh, accused of greenwashing. It is so great. And uh, what about your platform? How is it structured exactly? How does it work? Sure. sure. So, so we take a purely quantitative approach to ESG. Um, and really, this is uh, because we saw this as a big opportunity for ESG um, to use the latest technologies to make sense of, a, of ESG data, which is messy, unstandardized, as I just mentioned. Um, and one of the big criticisms is that of other providers is that they're often not very explainable. So we wanted to use technology to make our scores really explainable. So um, really our platform is comprised of three main dashboards at the moment. There's a stock level dashboard, which is designed for deep dive research um, into a company's ESG profile. Um, here there's loads and loads of detail that investors can go into if they want to. Um, we've got many different screens. Um, and ways of looking at companies. You can do peer analysis, you can look at the news flow, um, you can go down to the most granular level of data. Um, and, and again, at, at its core is, is this concept of explainability. So you can see exactly where our scores come from. Um, 
The second dashboard is a portfolio level dashboard, and this, this is designed to help investors with portfolio reporting, uh, to flag up any areas for potential engagements if the investor wants to do that, or if that's part of their strategy, um, to flag up any incidents or controversies that may affect their portfolio holdings, um, and generally to benchmark their portfolio um, against, against a, a benchmark of their choosing as well. Um, and then the third uh, dashboard is a screening tool that we built, which is designed to help investors with their portfolio construction. Uh, so here you can choose your universe, uh, you can choose many different filters, you can choose exclusionary criteria like no tobacco, no gambling, the sort of more traditional ethical investing criteria, but also crucially you can combine it with traditional valuation criteria um, to build, to, to get an output which, um, uh, which you can use as a basis to, to construct a portfolio. Um, so our investors find that really helpful as well. Um, but really, our, our three, uh, just going back to our scores, our, our, key, uh, our main key three differentiators are, um, are that our scores are real time uh, and they're, they're explainable, as I mentioned before, and that they're comprehensive across all three pillars, uh, uh, meaning that we don't have a particular focus on the environmental pillar like some other providers, because that's often the, the highest availability of data. Um, but we, we, we put equal amount of focus on all, on all three pillars to get some really interesting data points. And as you are the head of the committed team, how do you achieve these transparent data-driven ESG uh, insights all the time? In analytics, I mean. Sure. So the way we've done this is that we've built our own proprietary algorithm. Um, so we can show investors or the users of the platform exactly where the scores come from. So you get an overall score, like a te Tesla might get 45 out of 100. Our scores are, the range is zero to 100. 100 being the best, zero being the worst. So Tesla gets a score of uh, 45, um, but we can, show, we can show investors exactly where that came from because we built everything that goes into it. So the next level below would be the pillar score. Um, you know, what, what are Tesla's ES and G scores? Then the level below that would be the theme scores. We have themes that underpin all these pillars. And then at the most granular level is the feature level scores. So you can see at the, at the feature level, how Tesla uh, performs compared to its peer group. So at each level, you can clearly see where it comes from. And, and you know, this, taking a pro, this, is, this, is why, uh, um, this is why taking a quantitative approach is so advantageous and so beneficial to investors is because it's driven completely from the data. So even if an investor doesn't, uh, doesn't agree with our score, like our 45 for Tesla, they have to figure out where it comes from. They have to, they have to step through that process, which we show them really nicely on the platform um, because they know it comes from the data. It doesn't come from a subjective viewpoint from, a, from an analyst. Indeed, um, investments are very important for every aspiring entrepreneur, but getting the right insights about a particular startup is also important for investors. And the last question I'm going to ask you now is, what are your future plans for the company? What is next for Gaia Lens? Yeah, it's a good question. We, we, we have very big plans. We're very ambitious. Um, I think in the short term, uh, we, we are looking to expand um, our coverage to private equity companies as well. Um, not just we, right now, we cover public equity, uh, public, uh, publicly listed companies. Um, so that will open us up to another part of the market, maybe some private equity companies. Um, a lot of consultants are interested in that stuff as well. Um, we're also looking to uh, really uh, focus on uh, establishing ourselves more with, with the smaller and mid, mid sized asset managers that could really benefit from our product um, because often they don't have the resources to build big in-house ESG teams um, and uh, and so we can give them a really good starting point uh, to help them execute their ESG strategy um, by using our platform. Um, so we're really going to go and, and try and and try and uh, try and speak to these guys and, and see if we can work with them. Uh, so that's quite exciting. And yeah, we in, in, in to that end, you know, we're looking to we'll be looking to build our sales effort um, and our sort of business development side of things. Um, so yeah, so so the second half of the year should be quite exciting for us. It's very inspiring, Gordon. We wish you the best of luck in achieving your goals. And thank you for joining this conversation one more time. Good luck. Thank you, Sabrina. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too.